Okay, with well this question, you are told that two of the slabs are squares. So if I just make some diagrams a minute, so I've got two slabs of squares, and then I've got another slab which is a rectangle. We're told that the lengths of the sides of the squares are x, so that would be x by x, that would be x by x, and the rectangle is 1 by x plus 1. Okay, um, it tells you that the three concrete slabs cover an area of 7 metres squared. So the three areas added together would give me an area of 7 metres squared. So if we work out the area of each rectangle, we can set them an equation by putting them equal to 7. So, the area of a square is length times width, so it's going to be x times x, which is x squared. The area of this square is also going to be x squared. And this one is going to be 1 times by x plus 1. Well, 1 times by x plus 1 is going to give me x plus 1. So the area of the rectangle is x plus 1. So, like we just said, in the question, the three concrete slabs cover an area of 7 metres squared. So this one, the area of that one, plus the area of that one, plus the area of that one, is going to give me an answer of 7. So we can write that down. So we've got x squared plus x squared plus x plus 1 equals 7. Now if we do some collecting terms, we've got 2x squareds there, so we can collect those together. 2x squared plus x plus 1 equals 7. 7. And if you notice, that's looking very similar to what you should be showing. Uh, all I need to do is get a 0 here. So to get that, what I could do is get rid of this 7. I need to take 7 away from both sides. And then this equation would become 2x squared plus x plus 1 take away 7 would give me minus 6. And obviously 7 take away 7 gives me nothing. So you've shown that uh, the equation 2x squared plus x minus 6 is equal to naught. Okay, the second part is just about solving this equation. So even if you couldn't do the first bit, you could still have a go at solving this equation here. So if I just write it down to start off with. Okay, this is slightly harder because we've got a 2 in front of the x squared. And if you remember, I give you a, a different method to solve these ones. And if you can remember back to the lessons we did this, to solve this type of equation, Whatever you've got in front of the x squared here, you put in the brackets like this. So you have 2x, 2x equal to naught. Obviously, when you do 2x times 2x, that's going to give you 4x squared. So keep, to keep it balanced, you also need to uh, divide this by 2. And you also need to times that by 2 to make it by 12. Okay. Then we just follow the normal rules for factorizing quadratics. So... If you remember, the last two numbers in the brackets have got to multiply to make 12 and then add or subtract to make the middle number, which really is a 1. So if we write down all the ways of multiplying to make 12 on the side here, we've got 1 times 12, 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. Well, obviously, there's no way we can make 1 from 1 and 12. There's no way we can make 1 from 2 and 6. So the numbers in my brackets have got to be 3 and 4. Then we just need to decide on the signs. Well, because this one is a minus, it means the signs in the brackets are going to be different. So one needs to be a plus, one needs to be a minus. So to make plus one here, we would really need plus four and minus three. So the minus needs to go with a three and the plus needs to go with a four. Okay, the next step is to get rid of this denominator. So we need to see which bracket that two divides into. Well, two divides into two x, but it doesn't divide into three. So the first bracket needs to stay the same. 2 goes into 2x once, so that gives me 1x, or just x, and 2 goes into 4 twice. So now we've got our equation there. So if you were factorizing, you'd stop at this point, but because it's equal to naught, it's an equation, so I need to keep going. So I need to say that either, for this bracket to be equal to naught, either 2x minus 3 is equal to naught, or x plus 2 is equal to naught. And then if we solve these, we're going to end up with the, taking the minus 3 over becomes plus 3. And then dividing by 2, I end up with x equals 3 over 2. If I take the plus 2 over here, I'm going to end up with x equals minus 2. Uh, if you notice in the question here, it says you must justify any decisions that you make. Well, obviously, the sides of these slabs here are x. We can't have a negative length, so you can ignore that there. And I would just say on the side here, you can't 
have negative lengths. Okay, so we know that x has got to be 3, point, uh, 3 over 2 or 1.5. It does also say here, solve the equation to find the length of each side of the square slabs. So we know that the squares are 1.5. But we also need to work out the rectangle. So the length of the rectangle is x plus 1. So we know that x is 1.5. So 1.5 plus 1 is going to be 2.5. So the sides of the squares are 1.5 meters in length and the rectangle is 2.5 meters by 1 meter.